November, we've got the elections rolling around and plenty of seats here in the state of Maryland up for grabs. And one of the people hoping to snag one of the seats here in politics in Annapolis is Dee Hodges. She's going to be running for state senator here in District 8. You're a new face to politics. I think um, a lot of people know the incumbent currently in the position that you're running for, which is Kathy Klausmeyer. Yes, but I, I'm not exactly new to politics okay. and the way things are in Annapolis. Right. Um, I've been involved with the Maryland Taxpayers Association for years, and people receive my emails across the state. So okay. there, there are many people across the state who who know my name, or mm -hmm. they say, "Well, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard of you before." Right. So let's talk about a little bit more about uh, your history, you know, politically. I guess you'd say. Um, now, like we said, you haven't held any like major state or, or national seats, but you have had a lot of experience, you know, in public service. On the volunteer side. On the volunteer yes. side. Your, your history career-wise, uh, you said that you've been working in banking, correct? I spent most of my career in one form of banking or another. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have done just about everything in banking. I've been a branch manager. I've been an operations manager. I've been a regional manager. And I made just about every type of loan that you could make in banking, from business loans to personal loans, car loans, mortgage loans, that sort of thing. And I just enjoy working with people. And so we I like about helping them. So how did you end up getting into banking if you were history and poli-sci? Well, I, I was a math minor. I don't <laughs> think that was it. But I happened to walk in to a, uh, into a bank. Mm -hmm. I had been working for the American Red Cross. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I was actually in Vietnam with the American Red Cross. Really? Um, and it was one of the best years of my <laughs> life. Uh, but I happened to walk into a bank and inquired about a job. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that in that building was the regional headquarters of that bank. And it was my day. <laughs> and they sent me upstairs, and I was interviewed immediately. And then I had a second interview and a third interview. And all of a sudden, I was in a management training program. Wow. So I was lucky. That's really a great story, yeah. you know, seeing that you weren't even expecting something like that and to get the opportunity that quickly to go yeah. through. I think today, when young people look for jobs, they have to send out their resumes on the Internet yeah. and so forth. And there used to be a time when you could just open a door to some company and say, hey, what do you have? Yeah, what, what jobs yeah. are available for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another uh, fiscal-related uh, job that you held, or at least volunteered in, uh, is the Maryland Taxpayers Association. Yeah. You've been working with them for how many years? Probably about 14 years. Okay. And now, what do you do as part of that, that association? Um, we're an organization. We, first of all, we sponsor what we call now the No New Taxes Pledge. Mm -hmm. So we ask legislators or candidates who are running to sign that pledge. I've signed it. Um, I don't believe that Marylanders can afford to pay higher taxes at all. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to sign it. I think we need tax cuts. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think we need to roll back the 2007 tax cuts, and I thought that Maryland taxes were too high even before those tax increases. Right. Um, we don't even begin to compare to Virginia, and I think that that's – the reason why we lost Northrop Grumman to Virginia, okay. and we'll lose more if we don't start becoming business friendly. Okay. So we're starting to get a little bit into the issues, yeah. and, and obviously you feel very, very heated about the taxes. And, yes. And it's understandable. I think a lot of people, you know, that, that may not necessarily know the inner workings of everything, you know, I know a lot of our residents are definitely worried about taxes. You know, it's something that you see the numbers just constantly climbing. Um, now, in your opinion, you know, with you wanting these tax cuts for, I guess, across the board, you'd say? I would basically say across the board. I would, I would love to get rid of every tax increase that we've had. Mm -hmm. We've also had a lot of stealth tax increases that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. For instance, just this past, in March, um, an increase in our utilities uh, was passed. It was passed in the form of a fine for um, you know electrical companies um, for not using enough solar energy and the legislature knew that there wasn't even enough solar energy available in outside states mm -hmm. to to buy from um, but they passed it on as a fine and guess who's gonna pay it we are mm -hmm. um, 
you know, there are a lot of people here who've been without a job for a year. Right. There are people right here in Oakcrest right. um, who pay their utilities in some way. I don't know if they pay them separately right. or if they pay them with their monthly fee, right. but they pay them. And uh, to, have, to have electricity go up for no good reason is not something to do. And this is one of the things that I differ with the incumbent on. Right. She voted for it. Okay. I would never have voted for this. Mm -hmm. Now, I in your opinion, if this money, th the money is definitely a vital uh, interest. You know, the, these taxes do go towards a lot of programs here in the state of Maryland. Where do you see the money actually coming from that's going to be used to support these programs, or do you see certain programs being cut? I don't necessarily see certain programs being cut mm -hmm. more, I, I, although certainly mm -hmm. I think almost everybody could say that there's waste in government. Sure. I mean, we haven't really looked to find efficiencies in government in my entire adult life. We haven't really looked. Um, but what I don't see is I don't see the government increasing. Mm -hmm. The state government has grown at the rate of 6.6 percent a year since 1979. That's probably about twice the rate of the private sector. Okay. That's not, to coin a favorite word, it's not sustainable. Okay. And it's not in the best interest of the citizens of Maryland. I mean, mm -hmm. We need a lot of private sector activity. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of jobs here in, in Baltimore. When I first came to Baltimore, almost anybody at any skill level could find a job because there were just lots of companies here. But over several decades, we've just watched them go away. Right. Uh, and I think with, I think, you know, with the recent recession that we've seen, uh, Maryland has probably received some of the lightest, you know, we're one of the least hit states, I guess you'd say. I mean, you look at a Detroit or, you know, up in Michigan who, who lost the entire auto industry, that was a huge hit. Fortunately here in Maryland, according to a lot of statisticians, says <laughs> that, that we didn't get hit that hard. But it doesn't look like the recession is really making a huge upward direction, I guess you'd say. No. Um, but we ahead. didn't get hit that car hard because we have so many government employees. Right. We are very dependent on the federal government for our livelihoods Great. in Maryland. Yeah. I think it's one in six Marylanders is employed by some form of government. Right. And that's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of that really has to do with the fact that you know, we're so close to D.C., and, and yeah. a lot of those people are, I mean, technically, even though D.C. is its own state, I guess you'd say, you know, it is technically, you know, it's almost part of Maryland. You, you, you agree, right? Right. It right. was exactly. part of Maryland. Yeah, actually. exactly. Um, now, you're talking a lot about the private sector and, and trying to get jobs here into the <laughs> state of Maryland. Now, we talked about tax cuts, but do you have any other big ideas or plans to try and pull more jobs here? Well, there's certainly a lot of unnecessary regulations. When, when we become business friendly, mm -hmm. the jobs will come. Small business will see that it can maybe afford to hire uh, another employee because mm -hmm. their taxes are gonna be lo lower. They need another employee. Right now, I think they're frightened to uh, hire employees. Um, we've had a situation with the um, employment, you know, the unemployment insurance being extended, right. which I think is, is wonderful in a lot of ways. but with unemployment insurance being extended on the federal level, mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of mandates come into the state. Mm -hmm. So in order for the state to accept federal money to help with the unemployment, um, they have to extend unemployment in, in other ways. For instance, last year, um, they extended unemployment to part-time workers, which okay. we had never had before. Right. Usually, Part-time workers are hired before full-time workers are hired when you're coming out of a recession. So this is going to retard that kind of, of hiring. Um, and employers, their cost of unemployment insurance is now four times what it used to be two years ago. Mm -hmm. That makes it harder for them to hire new people, even though they may want to. Right. So when, when you begin to do good things, Lowering, lowering taxes, lowering the, lowering taxes lowers the cost of doing business. Right. Um, regulations themselves are a tax because mm -hmm. it costs companies money to stay in tune with regulations, to, to conform to regulations. And some regulations are useful, but some really aren't. They're just 
uh, a case of overkill.